Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Silent Core and welcome yourselves back to another Red Dead video. And today we're going to be wrapping up my role series. We're going to be going over the collector in depth and letting you know 20 tips that you guys must know about this role to help you rank up and make a lot of money in the game. The collector is probably the most complex role out of all of them, so there's going to be a lot of information in this video. So without further ado, let's get into the first collector tip. First up is that when you complete a collectible collection for Madame Nazar, you don't actually need to find her in-game to sell the collection, you can actually easily post it to her from any post office around the map. And this is probably the most efficient way to complete your collections, as you won't have to travel all the way to her specific location on the map, and you can just do it from the nearest post office. This next tip I think is a mistake that a lot of new players make when they start using their collector's maps, but if you purchase a map from Madame Nazar, make sure you actually finish that map before you open another map, or else you'll lose the locations that you previously revealed in the first map you opened. I made this mistake a few times because I'd collect the collectibles nearby to my location, and if there was one really far down the map, like down in New Austin, I'd think, oh, I'll collect that one later and get started on a new map. However, it will destroy the first map and you'll lose that location. So make sure you finish all the locations on there before you start a new map. Tip number three is quite a simple one and something that a lot of players don't actually think about. And that is when you're searching for a collectible with a map, what you can do is go right to the center of that yellow radius where the item is marked. And most of the time that item can be found bang right in the center of the circle. This isn't the case 100% of the time, sometimes the item might be found more towards the edge of the circle, but most of the time you can usually always find it right in the center of this circle, basically where the icon is on the map when you open up the map to find that collectible. I'm not sure if Rockstar did this intentionally to make them a bit easier to find, but usually when you head right to the center of that yellow radius, you'll be finding it. The next tip is to keep an eye out for NPC collectors. You can sometimes find NPC collectors just strolling down the roads by themselves and what you can actually do is just take them out and loot a collectible from them. Tip number five is to search every body you come across and the reason why is because looting enemies is a fantastic way to find collectibles. I've had an absolute ton of my collectibles found by just simply looting bodies and with the Frontier Pursuits DLC Rockstar has also sped up the searching animation of looting bodies, so it's now way faster to just loot a whole um, host of enemies after you've had a shootout. Tip number six, if you find a bird's nest, be very careful what weapon you use to shoot it. I believe the only weapon that will actually work is the varmint rifle. If you use any other weapon, it's not only going to destroy the bird's nest, but it's going to destroy the bird egg inside it and destroy the collectible for you. So keep that in mind if you do come across any bird nest collectibles, only use the varmint rifle. Apparently even if you use a bow and a small game arrow, it will still destroy the collectible. If you use eagle eye, you can actually see collectibles from extremely far away. We're talking literally almost as far as the draw distance in the game. And the golden tail the collectibles have is very obvious to spot, especially if it's at night time. So collecting at night time could actually be a bit of an advantage in the game. In this clip you'll see me searching for a collectible by the water, and as I'm using my eagle eye you'll notice you can spot it all the way up at that bridge, which is super far away, so always keep an eye out for that um, golden haze off of the collectibles. Tip number 8 is that Madame Nazar will change her location every single day. So if her location has disappeared from your map, she's probably just changed locations since she's a traveler and all. If you do want to find her new daily location, I'd recommend checking the Red Dead Online subreddit and there's usually always a post on there every day showing her exact new location. But you shouldn't need to visit Madame Nazar all too often, only really to buy maps or upgrades since you can complete your collections at any post office. Next up, do not sell your collectibles individually. I know it's really tempting to sell a couple of collectibles individually for a quick buck, but they are worth significantly more when they're sold in sets, and you're going to get a ton of XP for doing so. Even when you have doubles of certain collectibles, it's recommended that you actually keep those doubles so you can build collections of multiple sets that you can sell in the future. It's going to help you rank up a lot quicker when you start getting multiple sets. 
Tip number 10 is that the Collector is now being offered as a free reward for completing all 54 playing cards in Grand Theft Auto Online. There was some sort of glitch when the update first dropped and Rockstar was not giving the Collector rollout for free, however this has been now fixed so if you head to Madame Nazar and you have collected all of those playing cards in GTA Online, she will give you the collector's bag for free. If you were like myself and you ended up paying the 15 gold bars on the day of release just to get started in the game, you can actually submit a support ticket to Rockstar and they'll give you back your 15 gold bars. They've actually already refunded mine. You should unlock the field shovel as soon as you can, because this is the only way you can uncover buried collectibles. You'll have to use a roll token to unlock the ability to purchase it, and it'll also cost you an additional $350, which is a pretty pricey shovel even by today's standards. Tip number 12 is to use first person mode when you're searching complex houses. It can be pretty clunky when you're searching through units and drawers, all in third person mode, and you can even miss collectibles when you're doing so. However, if you're in first person mode, you have way more control of the camera and you can choose to look exactly at objects you want to inspect or pick up. Always have your controller vibration turned on and your volume turned up. The game's going to make you a small chime to let you know a collectible is near and it's going to give you a very distinct vibration. If you're using a custom controller it might actually have the vibration turned off as it can be better for first person shooter games but it's going to make your life a lot easier to turn that controller vibration back on for getting collectibles. When you enter a house that contains a collectible, you're going to get a very distinct vibration pattern in your controller and you'll know you want to spend extra time searching that specific house. Tip number 14 is that you can find multiple collectibles in one location. So take your time to look around and you can sometimes knock out two birds with one stone by finding multiple collectibles. The collectibles are usually put in quite obvious positions, so take a look around for landmarks or structures that stand out. For example, if you're searching in a field and there's a kind of rock or a structure in the middle, quite often you'll find the collectible next to that structure. I guess when the designers at Rockstar Games were designing or deciding where to put their collectibles, they didn't just slap them down anywhere in the map, they took time to find good locations to place them. So use that knowledge to your advantage and speed up the process a little bit by finding them next to distinct areas. The next tip is a very quick one and that is do not forget to search fireplaces. So when you're inside of houses, do look out for fireplaces and go up to them and see if you're able to inspect them. Not every fireplace in the game is able to be searched, but it's definitely worth trying and going up to the fireplace and seeing if you can interact with it because it won't actually show you an eagle eye if there's something hiding behind it. You want to buy the metal detector as soon as you can. This is going to help you out tremendously with the XP you're getting in the collector role. One of the best ways to use the metal detector is to use it as you travel between collectible locations and you're completing collectible maps. For example, as you're completing your collectible maps, as you pick them up and you're riding to your next location, bring out that metal detector and wait for the vibrations to let you know there might be a hidden buried collectible on the way. The collection maps aren't always going to give you new collectibles. For example, if you're looking to collect flowers and you get a flower map, it's not just going to show you the ones that you still need to get. You are still going to be assigned flower locations that are going to give you duplicates. The next tip is that your binoculars will highlight collectibles once they're in range, such as cards and flowers, but it will not um, highlight collectibles such as diggable items and coins. Tip number 19 is that if you're searching for collectibles with friends, you want to make sure you're using different collectible maps, because if both of you use the same collectible map, such as the both using the coin map, you're going to most likely be assigned the same locations and it kind of defeats the purpose of doing it with a friend. So make sure if you're with a posse or a group of friends, you want to open up different collectible types. For example, one person opens up the coin map, the next person opens up the bird egg map, and you can make sure that you guys are hitting up different collectible locations. And don't forget to let everybody in your posse know when you're traveling between locations to pull out their metal detector and you can all actually share the locations that the metal detector is going to lead you to. 
And that leaves me with my last tip for today's video, tip number 20, and it's actually the same tip I've given you guys at the end of the Trader Roll Guide and the Bounty Hunter Roll Guide, and it is that you can get a 25% boost on all of the roll XP you earn by purchasing the Outlaw Pass. I actually just managed to get my Outlaw Pass up to level 70, and I have gotten so many rewards from the Outlaw Pass guys, and I've also even got the 35 gold bars that it costs to get the Outlaw Pass been given back to me, and so much more. So if you want to be as efficient as possible in Red Dead Online, you want to make sure you purchase the Outlaw Pass as soon as possible when it comes to ranking up your rolls. So that was all the tips I've got for the collector role for you guys. If I missed any out and you have any additional tips, feel free to leave a comment on this video and let everybody know and we'll kind of help each other out in the comments if you have any other good tips. If you did enjoy this video and learned anything new, I'd really appreciate it if you could take a second to leave it a like and also subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this. Have a great day guys and I'll catch you in the next video.